So hey everyone, thank you for joining. My name is Shravan and I'm a product expert at Zoho. Alongside me, I also have Raj Kiran, who is also a product expert at Zoho. I hope that by now my screen is visible and my audio is loud and clear. In case you experience any network disturbances or technical issues at any point during the webinar, feel free to reconnect. The session is being recorded and you will receive a copy of the recording and the slide deck by email in a few days' time. At any point in the session, if you feel like you have any questions, feel free to use the Q&A option on your screen to raise them. And Raj Kiran will be answering them and provide you with assistance. If Before we dive into the webinar, let's take a quick look at the agenda. I will start by explaining the need to use digital signatures for your business needs. Then I will introduce Zoho Sign and briefly talk about the app's capabilities. After that, I will be taking a live demo of Zoho Sign. Towards the end, if there are any unanswered questions, we can have an extended Q&A session to answer them. Please note that this will be an interactive webinar session and after every feature is being explained by myself, I'll be giving you some time to try the same feature out. And if you're facing any issues, you can drop the questions tab. All right, so before we learn how e-signatures differ from digital signatures, let's take a quick poll. So I believe as I'm speaking now, it must be on your screen by now. So I would like to understand whether you are aware of the difference between an e-signature and a digital signature. Kindly let us know the response. All right. From the poll, I can see that many are unsure about the difference. So please allow me to help you understand it better. An e-signature is nothing but a digital form of your signature added to a document. However, it's not necessarily secure as it can be tampered with and its authenticity is difficult to verify. On the other hand, digital signatures are a type of e-signature, but by design, they are more secure. Their authenticity and integrity can be verified through digital signature certificates and the public key infrastructure methodology. As a result, digital signatures are widely accepted as a legal equivalent to hand-drawn signatures and stamped seals, but they offer far more inherent security. So why digital signatures? As you can see around, digital transformation is happening everywhere, and it's high time that your business digitizes the document signing process. The traditional method is always time-consuming and cumbersome and has its own set of disadvantages, like for example, poor handling of important documents, waiting for the career document, missing the deadline for document signing, and renewing your contract because you failed to keep track of it. A digital signing solution like Zoho Sign will not only help you to solve these problems, but will also help you streamline your workflow. So what is Zoho Sign? Zoho Sign is an e-signature application that helps you send, sign, and manage business paperwork using a simple yet secure cloud-based digital signing process. The software has already saved businesses millions of dollars in administrative costs by helping them digitize their documents and contract lifecycle. Zoho Sign offers all the key functions and features of a digital signature solution, along with several more sophisticated customizations that help improve overall productivity and efficiency. And the cherry on the top is that Zoho Sign readily integrates with your in-house apps using our very own REST APIs, webhooks, and mobile SDKs. And if you're someone who is totally new to Zoho Sign, then you can click the link below to sign up for a free 14-day enterprise trial which will give you sufficient time to explore the app completely. Since I'm sharing my screen now, you won't be able to click there on the URLs, 
once the deck and the recording are being shared with you via email in a few days time you can try it out here are the broad use cases across departments and functions where you can put zoho sign to use let's take a person who has been recruited by an organization for a customer facing role so to complete their onboarding process you can get their signatures on various documents ranging from employment contract and nda which can be easily done online using an automated workflow in zoho sign so once he's got into the organization he can go about using zoho sign from his sales app to send out documents to clients and associates to have them digitally signed and further he can raise financial documents that are signed by the respective authorities within the organization and can be delivered to the inbox of the clients directly from zoho sign as well as a customer facing person myself i can relate to these use cases and how a digital signing solution like zoho sign can help me close a deal with minimal paperwork there are several more use cases and one can use zoho sign for and this is barely scratching the surface in terms of what we see the app being regularly used by our customers so the highlights zoho sign offers multi factor authentication tamper proof audit trails and blockchain time stamping along with the certificate of completion along with this zoho sign also offers signers identity verification integration with various qes aes trust servers providers trusted document time stamping collecting signatures via sms securely these tamper proof features will help you in making sure that the intended person has only signed the document there are many ways to digitally sign a document for it to be legally valid across the globe zoho sign helps you to comply with regional and international laws such as the following the e sign act in the united states the idas in the european union the pipeda in canada in the acta in africa the electronic transaction act in australia and southeast asian countries and the information technology act of 2000 in india accessing your documents across platforms is important in today's hybrid work environment to help you with that zoho sign has native mobile and desktop applications available across popular platforms such as android ios ipad mac os and windows zoho sign is also one of the most tightly integrated apps within the zoho ecosystem which is a real value addition to your stack of zoho tools so in terms of the integration you want documents such as sales agreements invoices estimates to be you can use extensions of the respective apps like zoho crm and zoho finance similarly you can have your hr departments send and sign onboarding and policy documents through apps like zoho people and zoho recruit alternatively if you are someone from the finance department we do integrate with the zoho finance apps like zoho books zoho inventory zoho invoice and zoho checkout also we do offer third party integrations with ecosystems like google workplace and microsoft 365 and with cloud providers such as dropbox box one drive and google drive zoho sign also integrates with other sales oriented applications like hubspot pipe drive fresh sales we also offer integration with no code workflow tools such as zoho flow zapier and microsoft power automate which would help you in automating the digital signature collection and workflows all right now so let's dive into zoho sign let's go step by step once you have signed up with zoho sign you will be finding a screen similar to this so when should a user select let me log in or let me join an existing account so let's say you already have an existing organizational account and you are attempting to join it then you should go for the option on the left which is no i don't need a separate zoho sign account let me join an existing account and in case 
you are attempting to create a totally separate Zoho Sign account or instance for yourself. In that case, you can go for the option on the right, which is yes, I need a separate Zoho Sign account for myself. So, all right. So once that step is done and you're into Zoho Sign, this is how the UI looks. So you have the options, the send for signature, which is the multi-party option and sign yourself, which is single party self-signing option at the center. On the top left, we have the home button, documents, templates, sign forms, reports tab, and the settings. And on the top right, we have the activity feed, which will give you the general status of the document. So before we proceed, I would like to keep you informed at this stage, you are also expected to verify your account by email and post that you will be able to use our features. So let's begin with configuring your account by starting with the settings tab. So settings and profile. So this is where as a user, you can add your signature, initial and other details by the three options available, which is typing or you can simply draw or you can upload a scanned copy of the signature and the initial. Similarly, you can go to settings organization details to add your organization details ranging from your logo to your organization name and the other details available here. Further, settings, email templates. For reference, this is how the email looks at the signer's end. So you can very well customize the look and feel of it and brand your logo by using the edit template option. And finally, the legal disclosure. So settings, legal disclosure. This is what the signer needs to agree before they sign the document. You can use our default legal disclosure or you can customize it and have your own legal disclosure in place. Right. So let's cut to the chase here. Let's begin with the multi-party option, which is send for signature. So let's take an example. Let's say in your organization, a new employee has joined and you're trying to get an NDA signed by this employee. So you can use this send for signature option, send out the NDA and collect signatures from the employee online. So I'll begin with send for signature. Here comes the document upload section. You can do a local upload or you can very well choose to import from cloud. If you pick the cloud option, then we have a list of cloud pickers as displayed on the left, ranging from our very own Zoho work drive to Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, OneDrive. So you can use one of these options to import the file. Here I'm uploading a sample NDA file from my system and I'll explain the workflow of how things happen. So I'm just waiting for the document to get uploaded. That should take a few seconds. Here we go. And uh, once the document is uploaded, we can scroll down to the add recipient sections. So here is where we add recipient, define the workflow and further also we can set the recipient action. I'll show that one by one. So let's say you have multiple recipients and you would like the document to be sent recipient by recipient in a sequential fashion. You can, in that case, enable the order and the document will be sent in a recipient by recipient fashion. In case the signing is parallel, then you can uncheck the order. The document signing in that case would take place in a manner where the order is not important. So the document signing happens parallelly. Add me is an option to add the sender along with the recipient list and add bulk recipients or the bulk send as we call it is a specific workflow wherein if you are trying to send a document to multiple recipients where each of them sign on independent copies on the same document, that's where this comes into play. So it's a unique workflow. It's an enterprise feature. So to add the recipient details in such a case, you can download or sample CSV file and add the details. So here I'm going to show you a single party sign where I'm going to add myself as one of the recipients. And I'll also show the recipients end as well. So when it comes to the recipient action, you can decide what the recipient needs to do, whether you need to collect signature or whether the signing happens in a fee this manner or whether the person just needs to review and approve the document or the person just needs to receive a copy just like 
CCing in an email. Further, we also allow other customizations, like if you would like to add a private note for that specific recipient, you can use the space for it. You can also enable recipient authentication. So uh, this is an extra layer of protection for the document. So in case you would want the recipient to validate themselves before opening the document and proceeding to sign, you can enable this. So it's an option given to the sender. Further, we also have the email and the interface language. So you can choose amongst 12 to 13 languages that we have listed out. And uh, so the signer interface would appear in this selected language. Scrolling down, we have the more settings where we can define other details like the days to complete the signing. You can let the signer know by entering the desired value. And we have other options for sorting and filtering, like agreement validity type, document type, the folder, the description. These are for internal sorting and reference purposes. And further, you can also enable the automatic email reminders and also send uh, the reminders based on the delivery period set over here. And if you're going to leave a generic note for all recipients, you can leave it in this space. Once we are done with this page, we are expected to click on continue that in turn takes us to the document viewer page. So this is the page where I would be adding the fields for the recipients. So top right gives you the list of recipients and bottom right are the fields that we can add, right? So just for your reference, we have a bunch of fields, a whole variety of it. Just to name a few, uh, you can collect attachments from signers, you can collect signatures, you can collect textual input, you can use the radio buttons, check boxes, as well as use the payment field to collect payments from the recipients as well. So for this part, I'm just using the signature field. So I'm going to collect the signature of the recipient or the employee on this sample NDA. That's the agenda here. So I've done uh, adding the field. I'm just going to click send and confirm. That will send the document out right and all these documents are encrypted and stored in our servers you can very well view and track them using the documents tab that's the whole purpose of documents tab to give a your a consolidated view on the ui itself now let's quickly move to the signer interface right so the signers need not have a zoho sign account they can always access this mail from their mailbox we also support mobile based signing as well. So the signer is just expected to click start signing. That in turn will take them to the document information page. So this is how the document information page looks. They are supposed to click on proceed to the document. That in turn takes them to the document itself where the actual signing happens. So here as a signer, I'll first agree to the terms and conditions or the legal disclosure just a quick refreshing so this is what we were speaking at the beginning where i was talking about customizing the legal disclosure in the settings tab so this is what it is about the, the signer agrees to it and they can add their signature by either typing or uh, they can simply choose to draw the signature or upload a scanned copy of the signature so here I'm choosing draw and clicking OK. I'm going to sign this via Zoho sign and the signing is done. By default, the signer gets routed to this page and also the signed copy will be emailed to both the senders and recipients by default once the recipient action is completed by all the respective recipients. So that is send for signature. And now I would uh, uh, recommend you people to give it a shot and explore this feature so that you can get a more hands-on experience on the same. Just for your reference, so uh, we have put a sample NDA document so that you can use that and explore the send for signature feature. So it's a test document. All right, so it appears that uh, you do not have any specific questions. So let me move to the next feature, which is sign yourself. This is a single party self-signing feature. 
So let's say I myself being a Zoho sign user, if I need to sign on a document, it could be an NDA or an offer letter or any document for that matter or any agreement for that matter. So I can just upload, do a signing for myself and post signing, I can send the signed copy to a recipient. So here I'm just adding my signature. It is to be noted that all these fields are already saved under my profile, which I showed at the beginning. So I'm just going to add my signature, sign the document and click sign by Azoho sign. The document is signed. If I need to email this document to a recipient, I can add their email address and click send. All right, so you can give it a shot and try this option as well. And let us know if you have any questions on that. All right then, so if there are no more questions, I believe we can move on to the next feature, which is the templates. So templates come into play where you have common formats of documents that you would like to keep reusing. A best use case example is an NDA, which I already sent. So let's say I've already sent this NDA to an employee and I want to send this once again every time a new employee on votes. So in that case, going to send for signature, uploading the document, adding recipients and adding the field subsequently would be a manual and cumbersome process because you have to do that every time. To save time, we can use the templates where documents with common formats like the templates I just showed, uh, you can just add it. It follows the same workflow which I showed you for send for signature. So in this case, you're saving them off as a template and whenever you need to use it, you can simply come to the templates tab. Within a few clicks, you can send out the template manually. So let's say if I want to send this template, I can just double click on it. I can pre-fill values and then I can add the recipient details and quick send without the manual process which I showed at the beginning. So in short, the templates are a feature to wherein you have common formats that you would like to keep resending or reusing on a periodic basis. So yes, you can also go ahead and create a template and see how it works. And also if you have any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A section. We'll be more than happy to assist. All right, so we'll move on to the next feature, which is sign forms. So sign forms is a feature with a unique functionality. So this comes into play, let's say, where the user of Zoho Sign would like to generate a signing URL, which is secure, and they would like to publicly distribute this via a website. And a classic use case example would be a website registration. For example, you have a website of your own where you are encouraging users to come sign up for the website, and in the process, they'll be agreeing to the terms and conditions. So in that case, instead of sending the document by email which we saw just now you can generate the signing url and directly embed this on your website so anybody who gets to the website signs up to your website just can access that secure link which is embedded and get to the document and do the signing right so for sign forms you can just go to sign form create sign form option and a prerequisite to it is to have a template which we just saw earlier you can choose a template Fill this form, which requires details like name of the sign form, its validity, and whether you would like to enforce signer authentication, and the limit to the sign form response is whether you want to close off the signing with 50 people, 100 people, so on and so forth. And also, you can avoid duplicate responses. And clicking create will create the sign form. So these are some of the test sign forms which I've already created. You can just go to actions. And whenever you would like to get hold of the URL, signing URL, that is, you can just copy the URL and you can embed this on your website. Right? At the recipient end, it looks something like this. So the sign form URL, when the recipient clicks on it, it will ask them for their name and then their email address. They'll enter that and they'll click start signing. That takes them in turn to the document signing part, which takes place. So I'm just shared that particular scene of how it looks at the signers end. I hope you're able to see my screen. So this is the signer end of the sign form signer information page, as we call it. So the signer would enter the name, their email address, and just click start signing. It takes them to the document signing portion, 
which we saw earlier in the first example, right? And further, as a sender, you can always view the associated responses of the sign form. So you can just go to the actions tab corresponding to that particular sign form and just view the associated responses. It'll give you the complete details of who all are the signers who have signed the sign form. So yes, if you would like to explore this option or if you have any questions on these, please go ahead and shoot the questions. We'll be happy to assist. All right, so thanks for the questions there. Uh, and uh, let's move on to the next feature that we have, which is the reports tab. So reports tab can give you graphical representation of uh, the document status. And further, uh, as a simple use case, let's say you would like to view the declined or the completed or the in progress documents, let's say in the last 20 days or two months, you can very well choose the custom date. And get the reports exported in a CSV format. So that's the whole purpose of reports to generate the reports based on the document status so that you can have a view of them in a CSV format. So with that, yes, I am uh, done with the demo part of it. So that covers the basics of Zoho sign. So here are some uh, important URLs to help you in getting started with these integrations. So if you are stuck at any point while setting up your Zoho sign account, you can always find related help documents in the very first link. We also have individual links for our solutions guide, integrations and API guide. We also have our very own YouTube channel and video repository where we upload all webinar recordings along with how to videos for all our native applications. If you have any other queries, ideas, or want to engage in discussions with our community of developers and users, you can visit our forums and participate. I've also given the links for you to read up on the legality of Zoho Sign in your country. It's surprising and request a personalized demo for your organization. Zoho Sign also offers paid one-on-one -on -one trainings. You can know more about this by clicking on the link present in the slide. So this is what our customers had to say about Zoho sign in the Twitter world. And if you have any questions or any feedback or need any form of assistance, you can always reach out to us by email at support at Zoho sign.com or support at EU dot Zoho sign.com in case you're from the EU region. You can also visit our social media pages for the latest announcements regarding our product and engage with us over there too. Thank you all for participating. I hope you all had a lot to learn and a lot of takeaways from this webinar. Do watch out for our future webinars and join us to learn more. Until then, this is Shravan taking leave on behalf of Zoho Sign. Take care. Have a great day. Thank you.